So the world's a stage, and you might be asked to do a presentation on it. Um, you might even be asked to use something like PowerPoint. I like PowerPoint because it is a great way to kind of organize your ideas and do the outline and do the presentation. Um, it also is a very robust multimedia program. And uh, we're visual learners. You know, video is king of communications. And the idea of integrating those kind of things into your PowerPoint can really make it much more engaging and much less of a kind of sleepy, you know, lecture, watch the slides experience. So I think one of the big tricks about PowerPoint is keep the text light and keep the media heavy so that you can communicate your ideas through pictures, videos, sounds, and of course your narration, your voiceover narration. So um, those are the key things thinking about using multimedia as the real presentation tool in PowerPoint. So we're going to do the A project together. Lots of goodies to download in this one. I think there are like seven support files. So what you want to do is download everything. Let me go back one step here. So I've downloaded the instructions already. I'll download the actual raw start file. And then we have JPEG images, music, video, more music, and a separate Word document. So lots of kind of linky things that we're going to either link or embed into the presentation. OK, so um, let's get started here. Um, as the executive director of Maple Island Arts Council, you have developed a presentation showcasing the organization's activities over the past quarter century. Begin by inserting a hyperlink from Celebrates on slide one to slide 11 in the presentation. Okay, so a longer presentation would often have this kind of a thing where we would link from one to the other uh, slide at least. Okay, so let's go in there and just get into the download folder here. And I believe that is the presentation, right? Okay, so we can take a look at it in its raw form. We've got slide one, slide two. It looks like there is something already going on here, hyperlink-wise. Slide three. Slide four looking pretty blank. Slide five, nothing going on there, too critical, right? Six, here we have a picture. Um, nice looking art class. Another link is here, special events. And we have a priority slide, looks like this might be grounds for a smart art. And then we have, let's celebrate. This is slide 11, so this is the one we're going to link to. And then the end. Okay, so um, first thing we're going to do then is on slide one, what we want to do is create a link to slide 11 from this slide, right, uh, on the word celebrate. So how can we do that, um, Jaylene? How are you this morning, Jaylene? Let's see if we can get through this without too much. How about Christina? Hi. Good morning. So, Good morning. so how do we insert a hyperlink on this slide? Just give me the, the point me in the right direction. Um, I, I would select the word celebrate. And Excellent. just right click on it. Good. And then we're going to go, how are we going to get the hyperlink in there? Oh, I usually right click. Oh, right click. Okay. Yeah. That should work too. Yeah. Right. So yeah. You can and go then insert hyperlink, but you certainly mm -hmm. the pop up here will take you there. So yeah. there's the hyperlink. If there's a hyperlink already there too, you'll usually see something like edit hyperlink where you can go in here and change some of these parameters. So we have a couple of choices. Right, we can go into this document is what we want. Um, and you'll notice that slide 11 is not there. But if you pull this down, then you get all the slides. Okay, so typical links might be first, last, 
you know, if you wanted to have one where someone just kind of goes through it by themselves, they could link, you know, forward back on each slide. You could do that where it just goes next or previous. But in our case, we want number 11, so we're going to go there, right? Makes sense. And they don't ask for anything else, but remember, you could add a screen tip here. So when someone hovers over it, they'll see a little tip and let them know, you know, where, you know, it says something like, you know, click here to go to our website or to go to slide 11 or whatever. So let's go click OK. And you'll notice right away that the uh, formatting changes. And in order to follow this link, we have to actually be in the presentation mode. So uh, if we go slideshow, uh, play from current slide. Now you can see the link is active, and when we click on it, there's slide 11, okay? So that worked kind of like a charm. Nice work, Christina. All right, so that's step one. On slide two, who are we? Edit the hyperlink priorities. Okay, so here we are on that slide, and uh, we edit hyperlink, right? Um, so what we want to do is edit the hyperlink so that it goes to slide 10, our priorities. Okay, so Amanda, you want to take a shot at it? It's pretty similar, yeah. right? Um, you right-click it, right? So yeah, we can certainly right-click it, right? So we can um, yeah. right-click it. Click and... hyperlink. Yeah. Uh, edit hyperlink. Perfect. And then I guess you just click slide 10, right? Yeah, I think so, right? We want to change it. Um, you know, we have the option here to remove the link, but in this case, I think just editing it will do it. So our priorities is what we want. Say OK, and let's test this one again. So we'll play from current slide, and now this should take us to that priority slide. And it works like a charm. OK, so pretty, pretty friendly with hyperlinks, PowerPoint is, internal ones. All right, very good. Nice work. Um, next, we have Stephania. Good morning. How are you? Just say hello so I can make sure you're here. And I'll read the instructions. On slide three. Okay, so let's go there. With a lot of help from our friends. We'll play on the Beatles there. Um, edit the hyperlink so the purple smiley face. So it goes to the last slide in the presentation. Okay, so Stephanie, are you here? Okay. Well, Gwen, it looks like this is going to be. I do, besides. Uh, make sure that there is a hyperlink there. We'll use our right click technique hyperlink, edit hyperlink. So it looks like there is one there. It looks like it just goes to the next slide at this case, right? So in this case, what we want to do is edit the hyperlink so it goes to the last slide in the, in the presentation. Pretty straightforward, right? And the last slide right now looks like the maple leaf. And of course, we can check it. It's always good to check these things um, as you do them so you can make sure that they're actually working. That works. And uh, certainly when you end you know, your editing phase of the show too, you want to kind of run through the whole thing as if you were the audience member, depending on how the show is going to be delivered, if you're going to be delivering it in a live presentation, or if you're going to be um, kind of letting people view it on their own, you want to make sure that the user experience, right, the UX um, is designed so that people won't be lost or start agonizing over it or something like that. So everybody good? Did I hear a question in the background there? On slide four, um, use the content placeholder to insert a new smart art diagram using the radial cluster layout in the cycle category and then add data as follows. That sounds like a mouthful. So let's go to slide four first, what we do. And what am I going to do here, Guinevere? I want to add a smart art using the radial cluster layout in the cycle category. So in the placeholders, there is a smart art placeholder. Right, Gwen? Yes, I see it. Right, so we go on that guy first. This is a good place to start. Remember, if you had a bulleted list already, you could convert it to smart art. But in this one, we're not going to convert. We're going to start from scratch. 
So we'll go there. And they mention the cycle, right? Cycle radio cluster. So here's the cycle ones. And uh, you can see all the cycles that are there. And you want to find the radial cluster. Basic radial, radial cluster. Come on. There, no, no, cycle radial, radial cluster. I know it must be here because I didn't make a special. Okay, it doesn't look so round. That's why it's a little kind of fools you a little bit. Okay, so we have our basic smart art there. And then in order to edit um, what they want to put in there, if you look at this little arrow that's coming out, this will let you open up that little text pane there that is going to you know, be uh, ready for you to edit these texts. Okay, um, so show the smart art text pane if not displayed. Okay, so we click on that. Enter the smart art as shown in figure one. So they give you a picture here where basically it's just WYSIWYG, you follow what's in the picture. So uh, let me just make sure I know what's going on. So, da, 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 da. Okay. so the top one says, uh, run the gallery. Actually, let me do this one here. This, this is the main one, right? So it's the uh, name of the organization as an acronym. Put that in. And then the top one is run the gallery. The next one is, I believe, uh, corporate music concerts. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Okay, and then we should be able to edit it right here too. Right. Just to, just to show you that you know it has the versatility. Hosts the writers' festival. pretty easy to do, right? It, it kind of um, sizes up as you type more stuff in there, the font gets smaller, and you can see both of the views are dynamically related, so you can move from one to the other, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Probably this is better, the one they show you, but I just wanted to show you that you could, you know, work the other way. The other thing that you might want to do when you're actually doing a lot of editing on the slide is, you know, try to get rid of some of these other windows. If you're not using the notes, for instance, you can bring that down. Maybe the thumbnail view, you know, can shrink down. This way you can really kind of see what's going on, you know, in the graphic view here of the slide view. Okay, good. I think we're in business. We're up to the next one, which is number five. With slide four still displaying what we do, continue to build a and format the smart art diagram. So the first thing is to move organized music concerts below the writer's festival. Oh, excuse me. So uh, Nathaniel, how are you this morning? I'm good, Professor, and you? Good. Glad to hear that. So we want to edit these guys, right? So if you click on it and you get the text there, you can see you can add, take away. Um, you can also make more important or less important, right? Or remember shift tab and tab. Or you can move things up and down in a, you know, where they're with the same kind of level. So in this case, they're asking us to move organize, um, organized music concerts below the writer's festival. Okay, so I, I spelled some things here. Like, yeah, organized music concerts. Let me do that. It's supposed to be organized, right? Okay? Just to move that below, all you've got to do is just drag it, actually, or you can use this. Okay, and you'll see how that makes it obviously move in the diagram, too. Okay, so we got that. Nathaniel, I gave you a head start. How about the next one here? Add. A new one, right? We want to add a new one. Run art classes. So how would we add another one here, Nathaniel? Would, um, you, would you, um, yeah, would the plus guide you in doing that? Yeah, I absolutely. Assume. So plus is going to do it. Make sure you're on the one where you want to add it because I think it'll add it after. So in this case, it looks like we're going to add it at the end. Okay, we got that. And then just type it. Run Oh, that didn't work. Try it again. Run art classes. Sounds like fun. Okay, so then apply the cartoon smart art 3D smart art style. 
So what am I going to do for that, Nathaniel? How am I going to get to that? Probably somewhere up here, right? Smart art, cartoon yeah. 3D smart art style. So it's probably this guy, right? Smart art styles. They all look very similar, but I guess the best way to do this would be to pull down, right? And we can see the 3D is here. And then as you start to hover over them, yeah, it starts you'll see. Once you hover. Yeah, there it is, cartoon. And the nice thing about it is it's not too cartoonish. I don't know why they even call it cartoon, but it gives it a little kind of uh, 3D kind of look. Works pretty good. The next thing is to change the colors to colorful accent colors. Professor, can you show how you did that one more time? I think I lost you. Sure time. thing. Yeah. Let's go back. So what we did was if we were somewhere else, first thing we want to do is make sure that we click on the smart art itself. And then the contextual uh, menus or tabs of the ribbon here will open up. And what we want to do is go to the design. Okay. And you have various layouts you can change, but in this case, it's the styles. And the style that we want is the 3D cartoon. So you see when we pull down the more styles, there is a 3D section, which points us in the right direction. And then as you start to hover over them, right, as much as I wanted to use this one, um, this is the one that they're asking for right here. Okay, so when you click on that, you should get that cartoon look. And then to take it to the next level, right, we're going to change the color. And what are we looking for here? Colorful accent colors. So pull this down. Here's colorful. And yeah, it looks like it's that first choice. And I like to just kind of make sure, look at the other ones, see what else is going on. But it looks like that is exactly what they're looking for. So you hit that, certainly get a, a more cartoony look, I guess. And then change the height of the diagram to 4.4. So that's going to be, it's not here, right, Nathaniel? So it must be here, right? I thought you it would be format. change yeah. colors. I'm sorry. I thought it would be in um change colors. Or... Mm, yeah, the colors, they, you know, it's kind of weird. Sometimes I always get confused the way they break these up. Mm -hmm. You know, design, format, obviously they're somewhat similar. So if you yeah. don't see it under one, try the other one. Okay. Uh, format is more the kind of, uh, you know, basic. And then I guess this one takes you to the next level. Mm -hmm. So what do we want here? 4.4 .4 inches as the height. And... Um, Let's see what happens. It changes the 4.4. So we're not constraining the, the proportions. And uh, let's just make sure that that looks good. Oop, that looks weird. But it's not what it should look like, right? So the trick is, I guess, to not have just selected out here. Because I think I had just this guy selected. Now let's see what happens. 4.4. OK, so that's better. Good. All right, Nathaniel, nice work. Number five is in the can, as we say. In the can. You know where that comes from? Anybody know where that, that kind of old school, right? It's in the can. Does it mean like tuna fish or something? I'll tell you later. Think about it. It's in the can. It'll be more appropriate later. Um, so we're up to Janaya. And uh, Janaya, I have a funny feeling Janaya is uh, not with us. So um, I'm going to say, uh, Yoon, you are next. You Hi, hear you? Good morning. Good morning. Um, so let me read it to you guys, and let's see what we can do here, Yoon, to yeah. fulfill it. Um, so on slide five, I'll take us there. Um, use the contents placeholder to insert the video, um, gallery MP4, and then modify the video as follows. Okay, so which one do you think it is here to put the video in? Film icon. Yeah, so it's the film one. So remember, <laughs> just as an aside again, um, and this is related to my last question about in the can, actually. Um, film and video are two totally different media. And, um, you know, they've, they've uh, you know, film has been around a lot longer, obviously, than video. And... Um, you know, video used to be poo-pooed as the kind of, you know, good for news and throwaway kind of stuff, whereas film was the arty, and I didn't get to watch the uh, the Academys last night, the Oscars, but 
Um, you know, obviously the, the film industry has a very kind of highbrow effect on film. And, um, you know, video is like its little orphaned, uh, you know, uh, black sheep brother or something like that. But video has definitely come onto its own these days. And the quality of video rivals film, if not surpasses it. Um, but there's still this kind of delineation between the two where, you know, film is more the artistic narrative medium and video is more the kind of uh, news documentary, uh, you know, advertising, you know, that kind of, and obviously, you know, in the hands of the people, um, you know, social media, all kinds of things going on with video, right? Instagram, YouTube, lots of videos being posted and, you know, millions of hours of video. But there are different medium. So this is film. Film has a sprocketed kind of medium where video is an electronic medium. Okay, so let's just do this here. We'll click on that. And uh, if you don't see the whole one, remember you can always do that. See what's going on because there's two movies here. It looks like it's going to be this one. You'll also notice that other files are grayed, so you can't bring in the wrong file or at least the wrong format. You can bring in the wrong file, but you can't bring in, say, a you know, music file or a PowerPoint or another Word file or something like that. So click on this guy and say insert and the video will come in. Okay, so there is the video and um, you can test it to make sure it is actually a video and it plays. Um, you can jump to the beginning or end. You can see the time. So this video is 5.56 seconds. So it's, a, I mean, it's about five and a half seconds. Um, we can certainly add a uh, kind of subtitle here and we can adjust the sound level. Okay, so those things are obvious, I guess. But what they want us to do is to apply the soft edge oval video style. So where am I going here, Yoon, to do that? I think in video format and Good. video styles. Good. And then the soft edge oval. So that's the trick right there. It's got to be one of these guys, right? Devil soft edge. There it is. So the soft edge oval. And actually, that gives it a nice look, right? It hides that kind of framing a little bit. We do have these letter boxes over here, um, but um, I guess we have to kind of live with that, and you could format that out. If they're top and bottom, they're called letter boxes. If they're left and right, they're called pillar boxes. And this has to do with the idea of the, uh, any kind of you know imagery or video that's shot in one aspect ratio and then play back in another aspect ratio so that you have to kind of adjust with some kind of mask so it fits on the screen. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to change the video volume to low. And where do you think that's going to happen? I'm unplugging my headphones. It's monumental. All right, so it's under playback. And here it is, volume. Okay, and you have a lot of choices, right? Not the most fine-tuned. You can't really adjust it in between, but you can pick, you know, three different levels, and they want low. Probably because there's no real audio there. In other words, no one's really narrating. It's probably just ambient sound of the gallery, and, you know, that'll work. Um, and then it says select the option to rewind the video after playing it. Here it is. Okay, let's just look at some of these other options here. Um, you can actually um, trim the video, so you can do some basic editing, so you can play less of it, you know, start it later, end it early, you can do that. You can have it fade in and fade out. You can adjust the volume. You can also adjust the start, whether it's going to start automatically when clicked on in an animation. And again, this depends on how you're setting up your show, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, browsed by someone else or played live by you. Um, and then you can go to full screen, which works, you know, so you don't want it to play in a PowerPoint window, it'll play full screen. Um, you can also have it looped, which can be monotonous. It won't stop until it is actively stopped by you or the user. But we're not doing any of those. And uh, I guess we're good. So let's move on. Nice work, Yoon. Um, we'll come back to this one later, I guess, when we play the whole show. So now it says on slide six, 
make the pink oval shape a hyperlink to the support file schedule docx. And we're up to Onifa. How are you this morning, Onifa? I'm good, thank you. Good. I saw you needed a little help with something. I'm going to fix that for you. I, I saw what was going on, so we'll 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 take care of that. Um, and then what are we going to do here to make this a hyperlink to a Word file that we downloaded from the publisher this morning? Um, um we're going to right click. Good. Um, Absolutely, that'll do it, right? So right clicking on it, and then we can bring up the hyperlink menu. And which one of these would we choose? Because there's an outside, it's not in the document, right? So we got to choose. Um, what page or file? Good. And then now here, you know, again, if you don't know where it is, you're going to have to use browser select. But looks like it came up right away, right? So we can see, make sure, verify it's the right file. It is a Word file. Click on it. And do we want a screen tip on this? Yeah, we want a screen tip, right? So the screen tip is number eight, and uh, right. Well, if I guess, I guess you're good. Let's let's. Uh, well, I mean, if you want, let's, let's do the screen tip together, actually. So with slide six still displaying, edit the hyperlink to add. Click to open the current festival schedule as the screen tip. Obviously, you're gonna do that. I'm not gonna type the whole thing. I'm just gonna say click for schedule. Okay, but you obviously should type in the right the right thing, obviously. Or else you may get marked wrong, right? But I just want to show you in theory how it works, but I haven't spent too much time correcting my typing. Okay. That's weird. Why did that happen? I don't know why, I must type in the wrong place. So now again, we can just check this one real quick. I'm gonna to go to uh, slideshow, play from current. Here we go. We should get the screen tip, right? There it is, it says schedule, click on it, and there's the Word file. Works almost too good, making me nervous. And hit escape to get back to the edit mode. And uh, nice work, Onifa, as usual. Um, we're up to the next one now, which is on slide seven. Organized music concerts. Reset the picture to its original settings. Okay, so Valentina, you are our customer for this one. So I need to make some corrections on the picture. What am I going to do, Valentina? To correct the image. I know you must be here, Valentina. You having trouble with your mic? All right, let's try Ashley. How are you this morning? Ashley? Can you open your mic, Ashley? Say hello. It's a smart art. I can see that so far, but you'll notice when I click on it, I get three contextual uh, tabs here on the ribbon. Smart art design, format, and picture format. Uh, Ashley, I know you're here. I saw you were here. Um, how about Ryan? Can you help me out here, Ryan? How am I going to reset this picture? Format picture? Uh, right click on it. Um, will that work? Let's see. I had saw a reset shape. I didn't know if that would do it. Reset, reset shape. Yeah, but it's not the picture. That, that's that's probably not. Uh, it might do something in the smart art shape, but actually it's here. If you go to format picture here, um, and then to reset it in this area, right? Adjust. I think it's the first one right here. Compress, change, reset. It's the last one. Okay. So you can reset the picture and the size, which is going to reset the picture. It's subtle, I think, if I remember correctly. So take a good look at it, see if you can notice it. I think it just kind of loosens it up a little bit, the sharpness. 
that, right? So sharpens it up. That's the that's the original picture. It's actually a nice looking image, right? Um, so reset it to its original settings. All right, good. That was pretty easy, right, Rylan? Pretty painless. Chloe, you are next. All right, Chloe. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So Rylan got off easy, but uh, Chloe, you've got uh, six steps here, it looks like. So with slide seven still displaying, format the smart art diagram as follows. Add two new shapes to the smart art. Okay, so any idea? Um, do you go to smart art design? You do, absolutely. Uh, and then right at the top here, right? You can see add yeah. shape is available. So they want two new shapes. Um, let me just make sure I add two new shapes, design, add shape, smart art design. Yeah, I'm just thinking they don't really tell you where to add it, but um, what if we didn't pull that down and we just click this? So we just get two more shapes. Okay, so we'll go with that technique. I think that's that seems like they didn't specify before or after. We just go with the standard click on it and you get the two shapes there. Okay, so next step, Chloe, is insert the picture classical. Professor, into the I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't uh, follow the shape part really. Okay. No, no worries. Let's, let's go back and do it again. So what we want to do is click on the original smart art and then you mm -hmm. see the contextual tabs open up. So the first one here is smart art design and then add shape is here. And I said that, you know, when I pull this down, there's a lot of choices, but these things, they didn't specify the choices. I would just go with the straight, you know, which I think Are is you doing shape the down. first one, like those two gray ones, the first one. Yeah, we're doing the first one now, and it says insert the picture. It's the classical JPEG into the first new shape. So how they are we going to do that? It didn't fill up for me, even though I click on them. That's so strange. You didn't, it didn't fill up? No, like nothing happens when I click on them. You're, okay, you're clicking to the right of change colors, right? No, no. Look, look, no. Let's try it again here. So I'm going to go on the slide that has the smart art. Mm -hmm. Good. So now mm -hmm. click on the smart art graphic. Hey, you should get the marquee around it. Mm -hmm. Next step, go to Smart Art Design. In the Smart Art Design ribbon, the first choice is Add Shape. Click on that twice, and you should get two more oh, Smart okay. Arts. Okay, now I got it. Got it. Good. Thank you. Good to go. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so the next thing it says then is to insert this classical image, right? So again, this is pretty intuitive stuff. Um, so Chloe, what am I going to do to get the, the image in here? You can see there's an image placeholder already there, right? Yeah. Do you so, just click that? Yeah. Click on that. You should get your, um, you know, drop down here, and that's the one we want, right? Classical. Hit that, and because it's a placeholder, it automatically resizes it so that everything fits. And then we're going to do folk into the second new shape. So click. There's folk. And you can even double click on it, should work. Nice, looking good, right? So now show the smart art text pane. Remember how to do that right here, mm -hmm. right? We'll show us the text pane and we're gonna add another caption. So with this guy selected, I would say, um, add the caption jazz, to, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, jazz to the left shape, classical to the middle shape and folk to the right shape. Okay, so it's just a matter of typing them in there. Jazz. Okay, and then classical. Good. And then you can also do it down here. Should work. You just click in there, maybe, maybe not. Follow directions. Folk. Make sense to everybody? So now we've got our three. Uh, new graphics with captions. And if that wasn't enough fun, the next thing we're going to do is close the Smart Art text pane. Okay, that I can handle, right? So that's just that. Open and close. And I think we're good. We're going to ready to move on to number 11 here with slide 7 still displaying. 
insert the audio clip file and then modify it as follows. So we'll link all music. And we're up to Allison. Are you here, Allison, today? How about Leah? Hi, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so we want to insert some music here. And how do you think we're going to do that? Um, insert and then media, maybe? Excellent. So at the end, media, you have two choices. At least I only have two choices on mine. One is for video. The other one's for audio. We're going to go with audio. If you pull down, we can see there's a couple of ways to get it from the browser or from file. Or you can even record straight audio. So you know, PowerPoint will let you record narration directly into it uh, or music or whatever you, know, you have hooked up to it. So let's do audio from file and see what happens. See if it likes that. Okay, and there it is, our music MP3. So we're going to grab that guy and put it in. Immediately we see a music icon, right? There's the music. You got to make sure you're using the right format and everything so it, you know, it works well. Um, so now we're going to position the audio clip at the bottom slide centered between the footer and the placeholder for the slide number. So here's the footer, here's the placeholder for the slide number. I think that's what they mean, right? So grab it by its little edge over there and put it in there. And even with these smart art guides, supposedly, right? Can I get it positioned in between? It doesn't look like it's attracted to those particular things. But I guess I can eyeball it pretty close here. Okay, the next step. Um, is to trim the audio clip so it stops approximately at eight seconds. Any idea, Leah, how we're going to do that? So we formatted, but now all those other things that you're going to do when it's actually playing. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Um, so we got playback, and then if you look at the ribbon. Trim. Trim audio. And then you just add, or you just trim to the time yeah. that you want. Yeah, so you get a little timeline here, right, with a playhead. This is classical kind of uh, timeline editing that you might do for audio or video. So the playhead shows you where you are at that moment. I just love this. So you can see the waveform, too. So you can kind of tell what's happening in the music. Later on, as you do more advanced editing, you might want to have things changing, you know, at these what I would call posts or landmarks in the music. Right, so maybe something starts here and you change a slide, or something you know louder comes on, you bring on a visual, something like that. You can adjust the volume. Um, so here are the trims actually for the beginning and the end, and they want you to trim it so it stops at eight seconds. So I'm thinking this trim here, right? We bring it down, and um, you can see the the time on the left side, right? So it's very very accurate to the hundredth of a second. And there's eight. Let's see how close I can get it. You may not be able to nail it. Yeah, so you can't, can't nail it exactly right. And they do say approximately. So I think we're good with that. And now by clicking trim, think, you'll see. You to, I think you have to click the yellow part. That white part looks like it's just a fade. Let's see what happens if I do that. It's interesting that you said that. Let's, let's see. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I did not do it. So let's try it again. Trim audio. So um, these guys, is that what you're thinking about? These actual yellow things, they move around too. All right, so let's put that at eight seconds. Hang on a second now. Some of have to just reset it because I think I, I screwed something up here. So let's try it one more time. Trim audio. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So there it is, the whole thing like that. And again, approximately eight seconds. It looks like we're going to get that same 8.004. And now hit trim. And that works better, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can see right here, see it ends at eight. So. 
Very nice, Alexis. I stand corrected. Um, so the next thing we want to do is to start it to play automatically. Is that what it says? Yeah, start option, play automatically. Okay, so again, it's going to be under playback. And uh, look for your start options here. Start play automatically is one we want. Okay, so that means as soon as this slide comes on, it will begin playing the music. And then we're going to choose play across slides. What that means, of course, is that it'll continue playing as we progress to slide eight. Okay. Once it plays totally, though, we don't want it to loop, right? It could continue to loop and just play for the rest of the show, but we're going to say rewind after playing. So it'll just play until it's done. And then we're going to change the volume to medium. Here we go, right? Volume medium, a little lower than we were. And then hide the audio clip object during the slideshow. Okay, so that should be somewhere on the playback tab here. Here it is, hide during show. Okay, so we don't want to see that anymore. So we can just get rid of it. Okay, so that should take that off during the show. And we'll double check it when we're finished. We're almost finished, so we'll just leave it for now. Everybody good? Nice work. Um, we're up to Victoria. Good morning. Hi. Victoria, you get the goodies here on slide eight. So here we are on slide eight. Change the picture to 7A child and enhance it. So changing the picture, let's see if we click on it, we get our picture format. And I think I remember one of these guys, right? It was change mm -hmm. picture. Go ahead, Victoria. Yeah, change picture. <laughs> Good. So and then uh, from a file. Good. And the one we want is the child one, which would be this, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, that looks nice. And then um, the next thing they're asking us for here, Victoria, is to position it approximately in the middle of the slide. So I guess we can do that. Right? Yeah, you can just move it. Mm -hmm. Align or distribute would definitely be better, you know? Why be approximate when you can be accurate? But that's what they're asking for. Then they're asking to change the brightness and contrast. This is brightness zero, contrast plus 20. So where is that? It's in here somewhere, right? Yeah, picture format and then color, maybe? Adjust, I think. Adjust yeah. and try corrections. I think that's them, right? Brightness and contrast is here. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different configurations. So you can see like all the, you know, top one is the first, the brightness kind of changing and the contrast is staying at minus 40. So what we want to do is go to brightness zero and contrast plus 20. Let's see how much we go down. Professor, High contrast. Yes. Where was adjust? Could you just show that quickly again? I can't find it. Really? Absolutely. So what you want to do is um, when you're on your regular ribbon, you want to adjust this picture for high contrast. It already is a fairly high contrast image, you know. So I'm just going to click on it first, and you get your picture format, and then we go to the adjust group, and under corrections, we have all of our corrections. I'm hovering over this one, and it's zero zero, uh, but they want a 20% increase on the. Let's see if I can go down one more. That's it right there. So we'll see if you can notice the difference. Yeah, a little more contrast. So studies show that high contrast images work well on the web, you know, to kind of catch your attention. Maybe you're, you know, looking at something, um, you're distracted, uh, you're along your mobile device. So something that really pops as a thumbnail uh, would be a high contrast, colorful image, saturated, uh, something like this, right? Certainly catches your attention. Then change the color saturation to 200. So same general area, right? This time we're going to do the color one. And you can see here's saturation, tone, recolor. Um, so we want saturation plus 200. And there it is. Okay, very subtle, but it does bring in more color to the image. And uh, again, it's an attention getter. So then it says flip the picture horizontally. So. Any idea where that is? 
under a range. Looks like a little triangle. And then you've got your flip, rotate kind of things here. And they want a horizontal flip, right? So it would be this guy. And there we go. Everybody happy? All right. Nice work, Victoria. Uh, Solanice. Don't think we forgot about you. Solanice. All right. So we're up to um, number 13 on slide nine. Here you go, Solanice. Look at the already, right? Okay. Uh, remove the hyperlink. Pretty easy, right? Just remove the hyperlink from special events. So remove me is under edit. How am I going to do it? I'm going to get rid of this hyperlink. Remove the hyperlink? Yeah. We want to remove it. Right? So select would be first. Yes. And I believe we have to um, right click. Good. Absolutely. Right click and hyperlink. And remove hyperlink. Edit. edit it. Oh. And then right in there, you can see there's a button for remove link. Okay. Okay, so that should immediately get rid of that formatting, right? So we don't have the hyperlink underlying blue formatting anymore. And uh, I guess we can safely say it's removed. So that's the end of that hyperlink. And uh, just a couple of more steps here. Um, that was easy, Solanese, right? Yeah. Alexis, um, on slide 11, let's celebrate. Insert the video file fireworks without using a content placeholder and then place and modify the video as follows. Okay, so I guess the first thing we do is journey on to slide 11. Now, there is no placeholder, so we can't really use that to prompt the insert of the video. So what are we going to do, Alexis? So I want to insert at the top. Yeah. And then all the way at the right, I hit video. Good. Movie browse, probably from file, from right? File. Yep. And fireworks. Here we mm -hmm. go. Explosive. So there it is. Fireworks. Now, obviously, it obscures everything else on the slide uh, in some strange way. So I guess we're going to have to do the next steps here. Um, let's see, it says resize the video proportionally so its height is three inches. It's kind of weird. Where is the video? Hang on a second. There it is. Okay, so click on it. And to resize it, probably not playback, probably format, right? You tell me, Alexis, right? Am I in the right place here? Yeah, when to format and then on the right. I just came to that number two. Yeah. What did it say? Three and two? Yeah. And you want to make sure you have the, you notice by default the proportional resizing is there. So it's going to change the width automatically so that the aspect ratio, which is the height and width relationship, stays the same. Okay. We don't want to adjust one without adjusting the other, or else we'll get that weird kind of look where it'll look maybe alien or whatever. Okay. So we got that. Position the video in the lower right corner so that it does not cover any of the text. I think I can handle that, right? Something along these lines looks like it'll do it. Lower right corner. Well, I put, I put it a little bit above that date. Yeah. Place Good idea. And so if there is a date there, it'll display. Because this is a placeholder, remember, if you don't insert a date in the footer, nothing will show up during the show. But when you put something there, then you don't want the video certainly to be over it. Okay, so now we're going to trim the video. Where's that? Trim the video so it stops approximately at five seconds. Playback. Trim video. And Alexis, I think you were, this is the one you already corrected me on, so we know that it's this uh, uh, yellow kind of marker here. And you can see it also shows you the frames. So you can say, you know, I want it to, you know, end right when that red one blows up or, you know, something eventful happens in there. They gave us a number, so we'll go with that, five seconds. But obviously, a, you know, a good edit really should be probably looking at the visual and not just the time, you know, because you don't want to end, let's say you're editing a picture of somebody, you don't want to edit them maybe with their mouth open or their eyes closed or something weird, you know what I mean? So you probably want to look at the video to see what's going on. Okay, so that looks good. And now click trim. 
So we're in business now, we should have a five second. The next thing is to add a poster frame, which is really the same thing as a thumbnail. It pulls out, so that instead of seeing this weird image, which is the first frame by default, we can pick a better image that looks more like fireworks. And it says, add a video poster frame. Actually, we can, we're gonna use an external file um, using the support file um, art. Okay, so we wanna adjust the poster frame. Do we see it here? Um, video format probably, right? Video format, there it is, poster frame. Okay, so pull that up, image from file, and art. Is that the one we want? Yeah. Okay, so that will now be the new poster frame. Ooh, doesn't even look like fireworks, right? So it's just a totally different uh, kind of image. Not from the video, but that works too. And uh, the next parameter is to start the video when it is clicked on. So again, we're probably gonna consult playback in this case, right? Start in sequence, we're gonna do when clicked. Select the option to play full screen. Okay, everything's pretty, pretty laid out there. One thing about the Mac and when it comes to media, it's pretty clean. Um, and then uh, with, uh, I guess that's it. That's, that's it for that one. We have one more here. Uh, Joanna, I know you're here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip and go to Corral. Corral with slide 11, let's celebrate displaying. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's this guy, sorry. Uh, make the pink star hyperlink so that it returns to slide one of the presentation. Um, yeah, so it's the same thing as we did before. I just clicked on it, like, and then I clicked hyperlink, and then this document, and then I clicked just first slide. You nailed it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Thanks. I think we're good. So now what you guys can do is check out the um, the sorter and look at the instruction file. So if you go, remember to the view menu, um, the slide sorter. Its strength is that it shows you the overview of all the slides. So yours should look like this one. And let's play it. So we'll do slideshow from beginning this time. If you have a Mac, I mean a, a, a PC, you can also use uh, uh, F5, I believe. We'll start the show for you, F5. Okay, so there we go. We've got a hyperlink here. We already tested that, that's good. So now we'll go to the next slide, and I'm using the space bar or the down arrow key. This one looks good. No transitions between the slide. We have a hyperlink here. Okay, here's our smart art. Remember, smart art can also be um, animated so that we can have like each one of these appearing in a chronological order, and that might make it a little more attractive, you know, a little more attention getting, focusable. Instead of seeing all five of them at once, we can just start with the uh, corporation and then go on to each one to kind of build the interest. Okay, here's the video. Um, and we, we said it was gonna play when clicked on, right? So let's click on it. And there it is. Not much going on there. This is kind of interesting. It doesn't keep playing which is good. Now we'll go to the next slide. This should take us to the Word file. Oh, that didn't seem to work. We gotta double check that. Can I break out of the show for a second? Let's double check this one. This is supposed to take us to a Word file, right? I don't know what happened there, so let's try it again. Hyperlink. Schedule, right? This file here. Maybe I didn't click OK. No, I tested this. I saw that word file come up, right? There it is. I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, Anybody have a question or an idea why it didn't work? Um, um I just want to note another thing because I finished and I submitted it. Um, yeah. When it asks for the hyperlink, you have to pay attention to whether it says like slide 12 or last slide, because they'll right. want you to pick exactly which one. You gotta follow directions. It gives, you the option, yeah. Yeah. it gives you the options for first slide, last slide. 
if it asks for a last slide, click that, not go down and click yeah, slide. Same all. Thing happened to me. I just checked and I fixed it and then it went up the points because the same thing happened to me with the hyperlink. There you go. Okay. Thank you again, Alexis. So here we are on this slide now. Notice the music plays automatically this time. Okay, and it also plays across the slide. So when we go to the next slide. Ooh, that didn't seem to work. Let's try that again. Didn't we say across slides on that one? Yeah, there it goes. It was just that it was short. See, so it keeps playing, even though we're off this slide because we had it set to play across slides. Okay, and then we have our high contrast image here, our removed link here, priorities. This is also a linked slide. And then here, now, you know, the, the weird thing about this too is you can't expect people, I think a lot of people would pass by this without knowing that there was a video here. You know what I mean? So if you don't have it set up in a certain way, thinking about, again, the user experience, you might have your user miss that wonderful video unless it plays automatically you know in this case they would have to actually click on it it goes full screen and plays very nicely but um, unless there was some you know kind of pointer to let you know that this was a video um, this could easily be missed so um, just the idea of kind of thinking about the scenario you know the design and you know what the user experience might be like to make sure that you know yours is as bulletproof as possible would be a good technique to use.